Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials, I'll teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This is part two of my assertions tutorials. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website, javacjava.com, so I begin. Scroll all the way to, down to assertions part two. Now after watching my assertions part one tutorial, you should have a general idea of what an assertion is used for. In part one, I demonstrated one of two styles of the assert statement, and that was basically assert, and then it evaluated an expression, and if that expression evaluated a false, it would go ahead and throw an assertion error. Okay, and then anything after the colon would be the argument to pass into the, um, I should say, assertion error constructor. Right. Um, the second style is even more simple. Assert, and then uh, just basically an expression, and a semicolon. Okay. Um, so this will just simply throw in an assertion error um, as long as this expression evaluates to false, and then not passing in any extra debug information. So this one, um, you know, the second style will simply throw an assertion error if the expression evaluates to false. You'll receive the same sort of programs, program stop and crash that you experienced with the first style, only it will simply contain the method and line number of the assert statement. There's not much of a difference between the two versions, just a little more debugging info in the first style. Okay, so here's some basic assertion rules. Use them for debug informational purposes only. Do not use assertions to validate public, default, or protected method parameters. Now this includes the main method. Instead, use exception handling classes such as a legal argument exception to handle invalid method parameters. Now do not try to catch the assertion error. Let it stop program execution if assertions are enabled. Do not call methods that modify state in the exception portion or the portion following the colon. Okay. Because assertions are optional, they will only run when they are enabled, a program should never execute a different result simply because assertions are enabled or disabled. Basically, all the rules amount to a simple concept. Assur assertion should not modify state or change the outcome of normal program execution in any way, shape, or form. Okay, let's come down here and highlight the source code here. And control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen where I've got a uh, shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop. If you don't have one, you can create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new shortcut, CMD next, and finish. It's just that easy. Let's go ahead and open that up. And if you're new to my tutorial series, type in Java C. You should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, CD space backslash, CD short for change directory, backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory with the MD command called Java. Now I already have that folder, but if you don't, I'll go ahead and create it for you. Change directories to the Java folder, and I'm going to make a directory here, and I'm just going to call this um, assertion2. And notepad. Assertion 2.java, all right. Okay, let's go ahead and paste all this stuff in here. All right, so basically this is fairly simple here. What I'm gonna be doing initially is I've got the static string name, basically a class variable right there, and then here's my main method entry point. And right off the bat, I am using an assert statement to validate the length of the argument coming in, right? And if so, if this is equal to false, right? So if it's equal to true, it'll be greater than zero. So if it's equal to zero, this will return back false, and that will in turn invoke stupid method. We don't want to evaluate public method parameters. We want to use exception handling instead. Now, stupid method will come down here, and it will modify basically this variable, the class variable, to uh, Billy, right? We don't want to modify variable values. It makes no sense on doing something like that, right? And then we'll return back this string here in valid number of arguments, which ultimately get displayed to the insert here. All right, let's go ahead and run this real quick here. All right, let's uh, clear our screen. Let's compile this and let's run it. Okay, so right off the bat, we get program complete, right? And that's because um, 
We don't have an, um, assertions enabled, right? But now, let's go ahead and enable assertions. And we get an exception in main, main uh, thread main, and we get our assertion error, invalid number of arguments, okay? Um, you don't wanna do this. This is, this is really silly because uh, you know, just demonstrated it here. Without insertions enabled, we get a program complete. With insertions enabled, we get basically the program stopping. It's not the purpose of assertion errors, right? Assertion errors are meant to be really like debugging only, right? We don't want it to actually, you know, stop stuff there. All right, so let's go ahead and comment this out. <clears throat> actually, let's go ahead and remove it, right? And the proper way to do it is to use an illegal argument exception, right? So we'll just say, um, if args.length is equal to zero, we'll simply throw a new illegal argument exception passing the string literal to the constructor invalid number of arguments, okay? That is the correct way to do it there. So let's go ahead and uh, clear our screen, recompile. Rerun it, okay? So that, that's the, the best way to do it, the normal way to do it. Obviously, since we don't have any other stuff in there, um, any assert statements, this is, a, this is gonna return the exact same result back, okay? So that was an example of what not to do on that particular thing there. Now, let's, let's come in here and let's throw in a, um, let's throw this up here, right? <clears throat> let's replace that here. Now, uh, we're still checking for the length equal to zero. If the length is equal to zero, we want to throw a new illegal argument exception, valid number of arguments. Else, and then what we're going to do is I'm going to call this an uh, assert statement right here. And this is the, this is really the, the short version of it there, you know? So um, if the first argument of the string, arg or first element of string args, right? If it equals yes, this will equal to true. So if anything else comes in, other than yes, it's going to basically throw an assertion error. Now you'll notice I've enclosed this in a try catch statement, which we can do, but we do not want to do. That's that's against the rules there, and I'll I'll kind of show you why here in a well. Actually, I'll show you why right now. Okay, and then underneath that we've got basically the, the same thing, right? We've got if, and we're checking for this equal to yes. If it's not equal to yes, then we'll just display the console as expecting yes is the first argument, right? So sometimes you wanna put these assert statements right before there, but let's go ahead and see what happens when we close this in there. And um, then we go ahead and just, just uh, well, let's clear our screen. And let's run this. And we're gonna do the assertion statement. Uh, so enable assertions, right? Assertion two, and we are going to pass it um, as the argument, we're gonna pass it no, okay? So what we get here is we get null, right? And then expecting yes is the first argument in program complete. So that was hardly useful at all for us at all there, you know, I mean, that really didn't, didn't provide us with much information at all. Okay, let's get rid of this try catch statement because we shouldn't be doing that anyway, all right? And now let's see what happens. So let's come up here and let's save this, right? And uh, let's recompile, let's clear our screen, and let's run it again. All right, so now we get exception in thread main, java.lang.insertion, assertion error, um, and then we get the exact line number eight, right? So we can come up to line number eight, and we can see, oh, okay, here's what it happened to. So at least instead of null, now we know the exact line where the assertion, the assert statement actually, you know, stopped program execution. All right. So that is another rule there. We don't ever want to enclose the assert in try catches there. All right, let's go ahead and let's remove all this stuff uh, here. And let's go down with our last last line of code. Um, our last, last bit of code here basically is, um, it's just going to have us enter a number from zero to four, right? Let's see, all right. Okay, so as the main method comes in there, first thing we're going to display to the console is enter number from zero to four. And 
This is really showing you what to use the assert method for, right? Informational debugging purposes only. So I've got this, this call to a buffered reader object, right? And I'm wrapping a new input string reader and taking the input from the system.in, right? And that, of course, has to be nested in try. And I'm using a try with resources uh, type, type statement there. And that's this catch IO exception down there. Now that has nothing to do with anything yet. That's just uh, getting the input from the, the keyboard there. All right, and we are going to be invoking the BR, the BR reference variable. We're gonna be invoking the read line method, right? To cause it to basically, you know, uh, block until we read a line and, and take in a character or characters. So zero through four is what we're expecting. All right, so I'm really spending some time here. You know, first thing I'm gonna do is check for if i is greater than or equal to five, and I'm gonna display this string literal really, nice try, not, you know, and then return. Right? Okay, so if we make it past there, well, first of all, the, um, actually, let me rewind here, the parse int method, right? The parse int method, if, if something comes in here that, that it can't parse out, like, for example, if someone types in uh, the letter X, right? It will throw a number format exception. So I'm catching that, catching number format exception E, and I'm displaying to the console that same string literal, really nice try not, and then we're returning, okay? So I've caught anything um, that it can't parse out, right? So a space, percent, you could type in ASDF, right? And parse int will throw a number format exception that we can catch and do this, that, and the other, right? All right, so that should leave us with basically the numbers zero through four, right? Okay, we've checked for be greater than or equal to five, and so now we're checking case zero, one, two, three, and four. And then we want to display the console, good job you entered, and then plus whatever the value of i is that they entered, okay? And then we'll go ahead and break. Now, here's where you have to kind of expect the unexpected. You know, we've, we've got all these scenarios covered. I think it's pretty bulletproof, but hey, the assert statement will come in here, and let's just throw it in there because we're, we're not entirely sure what, what may or may not occur there, right? So for the default switch statement, you know, these are all drop throughs on 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And so basically for the default statement there, we're just, I got this assert in here, and I am just specifically um, got the, well, the Boolean literal basically there false, right? When, so if we get down to a value that's not zero through four false, it will just simply display the value of i to the, um, I'll pass it into the assertion error. Program will completely crash, stop out, and it'll display exactly what i was at that point in time, the unexpected value, right? Okay, so let's come up here and save this and just start playing around with this a little bit here. Um, let's go to our screen. And Java C. Compile that in Java. Let's run this. And without the insertions, so we don't need any, we're not taking it. I got rid of all that other code there. And now the only thing we're doing is entering a number from zero through four, right? Enter number zero through four. And I'm just going to type in zero, right? I'm a good programmer, so I'm testing my code. One, uh, two, uh, three, uh, four, and five, right? Oh, here we go. Really nice try not. Okay, so all looks pretty good there. Uh, now I'm gonna type in, for example, like, um, I'll do like a carrot or something like, really nice try not. Um, now I'm put in a bunch of junk, right? Really nice try not. So, so it looks pretty good there, but um, you know, all of a sudden, um, my coworker comes over and they're like, oh, okay, put in a number of zero through one through four and they type in, uh, negative eight, right? It just comes back program complete, right? We didn't get, uh, you know, good job you entered or a nice try not. We just got program complete there, okay? So at that point, we're like, oh, okay. Um, let's go ahead and enable the assertions. And this may not be the best example, but it is, it kind of gives you guys an idea on what, uh, what you can do later on. And I'm sure that when the situation arises, it'll just click in your head and go, oh, you know, I should probably throw an assert in that, uh, that particular, it doesn't hurt anything, so let's throw it in there anyway, right? So if I put in a minus EA on that, right, and I put in like, for example, number four, program, you know, it, it's going to execute uh, exactly like, like we're expecting, right? But then the one thing that's going to throw us off is these negative numbers that I don't have any sort of accounting for, right? 
And then we're gonna get our exception, our assertion ex error, I should say, and i equals negative seven at line 22, right? Okay, so, all right, so we don't account for any negative numbers, so we can come in here, you know, and if i is greater than five, you know, or i is, you know, less than zero, then bada boom, bada bing, we're good to go. We'll still leave our assertion in there because, you know, hey, I don't know if there's any other, other things that I haven't thought of in that particular case, but we can go ahead and recompile this again, rerun it there, right? And we put in negative seven. There we go, bada boom, moving. Okay, so that's, that's pretty much assertions there. Um, I don't really have any final thoughts on this one here. Just, um, you know, the only, the only thing I can really just kind of reiterate there is, you know, basically all the rules just amount to a simple concept assertion to so not modify the state or change the outcome of normal program execution in any way, shape, or form. You know, they're really for debug informational purposes only to run it in a, a live, you know, production type stuff there. So anyway, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.